so thanks for the intro. Um, so I'm from Paymobile, and I'm just going to talk about what we see uh, for converting users to making sure they do pay for your in-app purchases or for your content. So looking at a conversion, we consider there's four stages. Um, kind of first, it starts with the discovery, then it goes to um, evaluation, negotiation, and conversion. So I'm going to talk about each of these stages. Dis discovery. Uh, this is what we see, probably you guys notice walking around the conference floor. Uh, everyone wants to be discovered. Like, if no discovery, no conversion. So you walk around, you'll meet all these companies that will help you find that traffic, those users. So I know these companies, obviously, organic traffic is the best. But to find that organic traffic, you really have to push, push, push your title. Just push all the traffic you can to find the best users uh, for, your, for your app. And then evaluation. So when a user does discover your app and is like, oh, this game is actually pretty cool. Um, I'm glad I found it. Uh, you want them to pay without having to think about it at all. So just, oh, um, do I want this? Of course I do. Click buy, one click purchase is, is the best way. So. I mean, it's, just keep it simple. Why make it complicated? Why have extra login screens? Why have so many options? Um, just keep it simple for that user. Um, and some examples have the, just like the best companies do keep it simple. You look at Apple. What do they have? When you buy an iPhone, you buy the iPhone. You look at um, their Mac products, like a MacBook Air. Nobody says, oh, I want the MacBook Air. I have two gigabytes of RAM, or this person has one gigabyte of RAM. Maybe really, but nobody really cares. It's just one product. Um, this, this can be said when you're selling in your in-app. You don't want to have who's going to sell three different virtual currencies in that app. Um, you just want to keep it simple. Just make it easy for that user. Las Vegas. So they definitely know how to convert their users. Um, the slot machines, they have evolved. And it just, you used to have to pull a handle. Now you can just push a button. You stick in your $20. You play the penny slots. Just pay, 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 pay. Um, which penny slots are actually my favorite, because it is so easy uh, to do it. Just going along with, with people not really wanting to think a lot. I love my calculator. I don't have to think about doing math. I use Excel. Uh, stuff like that. It just makes it easier for them, for anyone to do uh, math. Again, I can't say it enough. Don't make them think when they're trying to pay. Um, there's too many times when you think, oh, they should, they should log in. They have to create an account with so much information about this user. Um, no, just, just have it easy for that user. <clears throat> the negotiation. So. When you come, you come they, um, they see the products you're offering. They're like, OK, how much is it really worth? Um, online deals are obviously different than offline. Uh, offline, we go through negotiations. Being a payment company, it's like, oh, our rate's this, this, and this. And it always goes back and forth. Online, you don't get that opportunity. You have to make sure you price it correctly. So looking at the negotiation phase, um, you, as that developer, have to really look at these six uh, principles when you're doing your pricing. So two things that kind of go hand in hand are need and like. Does this user need it, or do they like it? Um, you look at games, and I, as a game gamer, I would say an average gamer, I, I don't like that have to pay to enjoy a game. Um, I mean, that's, that's pretty obvious. But I, I like to maybe make it easier for me if I want to do something like, like Candy Crush. Keen obviously does a very good job of that. Um, but then it's also the price. Like, how much am I really willing to spend to get past level 116? So you have to figure out that price. H how do you do that? Well, it's, I'll go into that more. But it, you have to take into a lot of things into account, age, location, um, how much income they have. An opportunity cost. So if I'm buying something for this app, I'm not going to maybe buy it for another app. 
So you have to make sure that you have a good app. So sometimes uh, merchants will come up to me and they'll be like, oh, how much revenue are you going to increase my game by? Well, first of all, you have to have a good game. <laughs> uh, so that's the most important thing. Uh, because if it's a bad game, how am I supposed to help you earn more money? And then that also falls into competition. Uh, so if you have the best app in there, obviously you're doing better than your competition, which is going to help you uh, provide more um, or provide, be able to charge more premium. So going to the price, it's the need, like, addiction, and emotion. So need and like I went into addiction. How addictive is this gameplay? Are you, you getting your users to come back? How are you getting your users to come back? Um, with, with our company, we don't own the content, but I know when I can look at a game using five or 10 minutes and figure out how addictive is it. Um, you have to um, keep bringing that user back so they want to come back. You want to force them to come back. <clears throat> and then emotion. You want to tie it emotionally to your user. Um, is it, oh, like, you want to make it, like if they're buying gold coins, you, you don't want to make it so generic, but maybe like, oh, I want to buy gold coins to buy this really cool item. Like, I'm a huge Giants fan. Like, uh oh, I can buy a Giants hat for my character. Um, That'll be really cool. It'll make me excited when I drop in and see my avatar wearing a San Francisco Giants hat. <clears throat> so different people, you have, to evaluate, you have to evaluate their need differently. So ASL plus CI. What does that stand for? So we have the age, sex or gender, location, culture, and income. So the spending habits are obviously different for age. Um, I didn't have, I mean, I didn't have a credit card until I was 18. So you have to think about that. How is a teenager going to pay on your application? Um, I mean, obviously they can go to their parents, but also you want to give them the ability to, maybe they make an allowance, to give them the option to be able to pay on that game. So offer prepaid cards or uh, their mobile. Um, and then the gender. So you think, oh, how are their spending habits differently? Well, if you look at... When we look at when males are purchasing on a widget, they actually check out faster than a, than a female will. So you have to think, oh, OK. So a female is going to think about it even longer. So if you're targeting females to pay, you have to think, oh, I have to maybe entice them even more. Or I have to make it so it's very clear that there's going to be an advantage. A male, me, I'm just going to be like, oh, it's $1. Sure, let's buy it. Uh, location. Uh, so this location and culture uh, kind of go hand in hand. So location and culture is what, what do they need, what do they like, and what are they going to pay with? Um, so in culture, um, you have maybe in China where they're going to want to save more money. Um, and so they're not going to spend as much as maybe as an American who's like, oh, the price, uh, it's OK. I'll just, I'll just pay whatever. I like to buy stuff. It's a consuming society. Um, and then income. Obviously, income is different in each part of the world. So you have to do your research and figure out, oh, how much money do they really have to be able to spend in each of these markets? So you look at some items, and they just, they just want to have it. Like, you want, you want to drink vodka? You're, you're willing to spend, oh, I just, I'm at a club. I'll spend $10, $15, $20 for a drink. Um, at a dive bar, it costs maybe $5. But you're, you're at this place, and you want it. So you're going to buy it. You look at luxury brands. So Louis Vuitton, I mean, maybe it takes, only costs two, 200 to produce a bag at most, but they're marking it up 5, 10, 20 times. Souvenir. So in, in a game, too, it's, it's, the souvenir is you're wanting to remember something, a moment that's happened or occurred. So I know when I travel, I always grab stuff um, when, I'm, when I'm leaving an airport or something. But then also, uh, this can happen in a game. You want to, um, again, the, the Giants is like more like a souvenir. It's very superficial, but you're going to want to have it. And then special opportunity sales, so seasonal sales. So this is, this is good, like Cyber Monday sales, Black Friday, uh, are some maybe seasonal sales, end of the year, or quarter sales. Um, so you want to link that into your game uh, because even like um, offline 
um, time to have sales is a good time to have a sale online also. Upsell. So it's, it's pretty cool. I've worked directly with merchants and they always ask, oh, can I, maybe I click on five credits, and I, but then you want to upsell them. So you kind of like, oh, you take them, like, are you sure you only want to buy five credits? How about you buy 10? And it actually is a pretty good conversion rate we see uh, with that. Uh, discounts, again, I always say like, oh, you have to, you have to spend money to save money. You know? And this, this happens true with users. They, they see a sale and they're like, maybe like, oh, okay, well, especially on higher price points. You want to give that discount because you want that, the whale customer to buy the $100 price point, not the $5 price point. And then also linking maybe a virtual item to a price point. Um, it's like, oh, I get this free, cool um, lightsaber sword when I, when I buy this. Um, but yeah, but you're buying like $100 worth of virtual coins just to get this lightsaber. And then scarcity. So um, this, is, this can be, uh, this is a good one for, it always makes me think of this mobile app developer actually on April Fools, he released a $1,000 in-game item thinking, oh, there's only, he's like, I'm only, there's only three of them. And so actually one of the users actually bought one. And they didn't even produce it, they didn't make it, but, he, but this user was like, I really want that. So they bought a $1,000 item. And he gets a call from somebody in his office, he's like, oh, you wouldn't believe this. Somebody actually bought, bought the $1,000 uh, in-app purchase. And he's like, no way. But, you know, if, if a user, and you kind of push them that way, they'll be like, oh, only three items? I need to have that, that's gonna be so cool. So, so people like cool stuff. And then cross-sell, you know, Sometimes, like, you look at, like, Walmart, they have an awesome job of knowing their users. But then, so then you can take this into online. You can think, oh, um, so with, you, you think, oh, diapers and Budweiser, why would they really go together? It's because you have to look at the shoppers that are going and buying these things. Um, so you should know what your users are buying in your app, and then you're thinking, oh, what does that, maybe, oh, the guy's buying the diapers? Well, he also likes beer. Uh, so who's, who's buying your in-app purchases? Maybe stick another item next to it that doesn't seem unrelated, but actually can be related. <laughs> and then holiday sales. So this links to the other sales. You just want to link online and offline. Um, we usually see probably, on average, it's at least a probably 30% increase in sales in the holidays. Like Christmas time, people are more willing to spend uh, money, so that's a great time to do a sale. And then also, I mean, you just have to think about your audience. Um, maybe during the summer, we actually see a slowdown in revenue because uh, people are usually, actually, you would think maybe, oh, they'll play more games. But no, actually, um, we see our users are actually more active, maybe doing uh, family vacations. Or um, because we, for a gaming audience, it's usually, I don't know, we see 13 to 20 or then the dim different demographics, but there's a lot more traveling. Then a hormonal reaction. So, oh, uh, you want to kill some zombies? So you put a cool picture of a zombie getting its head cut off or something on your app picture, and that can actually be like, oh, yeah, let's, let's kill zombies. So then uh, you, the person gets really excited and gets emotionally attached to the app and is like, let's, let's do this. Let's save the world. So that's good, too. OK. Now, now that you've looked at all the links and ways to maybe to help sell your product, to help increase these revenues with these different options, now you want to earn, you're going to make, <laughs> you're hopefully you're going to convert that user and be able to sell with that. So when you're looking at selling though, you have to realize that the real world and the virtual world are linked in terms of these sales and opportunities, but also that there's a lot more different opportunities for the virtual world to pay. Yeah, I know in the real world, people say, oh, well, what about like Google Wallet? Uh, we didn't consider that really because I live in San Francisco and I don't think I've seen anyone pay with Google Wallet with NFC. So it's still not really there, but on the virtual world, you have to think about them all. You look at uh, China, Philippines, Germany, all these different markets is, is just so different. Um, and it's, it's really important to include them all. And when I mean include them all, you don't want to show, I don't know, 100 payment options to every user you're gonna to wanna to show only the top four to six options. I mean, even six is a lot, but you, can, you have to find that balance. 
And then when you're on that checkout page, it's, it's important to make sure that it, it loads, obviously, so they can put in the data. But the, also the time. You don't want it to take a while to load. You're, there's a chance you might lose that customer. Um, mobile versus web. So you have to think, where are your users coming from? Are they coming from a tablet or a mobile phone? Uh, you want to make sure there's larger buttons, maybe shorter fields, so you don't have to put in your whole credit card number every time. So you want to tokenize maybe that data. Um, payment variety. Uh, payment variety is like payment options. So you want to make sure you have mobile, e-wallets, credit cards, um, maybe one of each, or you just you can ask your user base, or or me. <laughs> um, and then also language and local currency. So you want to you want first you want the payment to be processed in local currency, and then also uh, to be displayed in local currency. Um, because I know if I see something that's, um, when I first went to South Korea, things were priced in won. And I'm like, 13,000 won. I'm like, I really hope the conversion rate is, uh, I, ho I hope I'm not paying over $100 for this lunch. Um, so that's, it's important to make it easy for that, for that user to understand what they're paying. Um, and then no surprises. It's, al it's always funny when I'm checking out, buying tickets is the worst online for me, because it's always, oh, a, a convenience fee. I don't know who it's convenient for, but it's not convenient for me. Uh, so you, you don't want to add that surprises. It, it's, it's, it's not fun. You're hurting your user base. And then trust. So we think that, or we know that, you want to have a clear checkout page. You're inputting your credit card information. You're not going to put it on a, a shady site. Um, so you want to make sure the page fits into your game, into your site, uh, to make sure the user is comfortable putting their data in there. And then confirmation. So once the user does pay, send that confirmation to them. Know that it's gone through successfully, and if they do have any issues, they can contact you directly. So this would be an example of maybe like, this would be probably US-based um, processing. So you want to you wanna give them some options, like a, you just, you would place an order of popularity. And this depends actually per app. So when we first go live with an application or a game, uh, we look at it and we take all the data. Oh, what's, what's performing well? And we can shift around the order of these. So maybe, oh, credit card's performing best, but maybe actually um, the phone option is, is better, doing better than bank transfer. So we would switch that order. Just again, keeping it simple and making it easy. And then for mobile. So like I said, you want to have clear and easy to read buttons. So this is our HTML5 one where it's easy, you just click a button, and then it works well on any phone, any tablet, it's just done on the web view. And then we make sure we shorten the, um, the information that's required as long as the app is secure. So it's easier for the user to put in their credit card information or their PIN or whatever they need to put in. And that's it. <laughs>